All right. So my name is Angel Diaz Maroto. So first mission for you to pronounce my name. Just kidding. I'm from Spain, and I'm an agile coach, part of Agilar, one of the leading agile consultancy firms in Latin America and Europe. And we work trying to help companies doing this agile thing in their in their environment, right? And hopefully to improve their Monday, right? <laughs> That's what we try to do. I'm also uh, one of the CEC from the Scrum Alliance, a certified enterprise coach, which is something which is cool stuff. And management 3.0 license trainer. Maybe you sign up. I hope you sign up for my training on Monday and Tuesday. If not, you are still on time. You're gonna have a lot of time, a lot of fun. And this is a this is about customer centricity, and how does it work together with Agile? So that is something that I always ask to every team that is start working with me, doing Scrum or doing Agile, or whatever they do. I ask them why. So. Do you want to do Scrum? Why? Why do you want to do Scrum? And what do you think is their most uh, common answer to this? Why? <laughs> exactly. Because everybody else is doing this. Is that hard to Scrum because faster, cheaper? Faster, quicker. cheaper, stronger. So yeah. like a Nike advertisement, exactly. right? <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get the things done fast if I do Scrum. Yeah, yeah, so performance, be better at something. Uh, what else? Uh, it's, it's supposed, a great point, it's supposed to be customer focused, but I've been doing this job for a long time, and that never was the answer from any team. So never, no, nobody cared about the actual customer. Some of them, they might mention the product owner, but the product owner is not your customer, right? You feel that really quickly. Exactly. The bigger, exactly. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. So the bigger you get, the less contact you have with the customer, and the less focus you have. With in your customer because the culture changes. The culture is more process focused, productivity focused, and how about the customer? We don't feel that anymore. So let's try to answer that question. Why? Why do we do agile? What, what is this important? What are we trying to achieve? That is absolutely not productivity. So we, we started talking about agile with this mission. This is how I ex usually explain Agile. I call it the Agile Clover, right? In which I start thinking about how we thought we could ensure the success of a project. For many years, we thought that with a good plan, with documents, with processes and tools, and with contracts, we could ensure that every project could be a success. And we failed, right? So we learned that we need a shift. We need to change something. We forgot about people and interaction. We forgot about collaboration. We forgot about the capability to respond to change. And we forgot about working product. And that's great from a project uh, management perspective. We evolved. That's awesome. But how about the organization? Like going a little bit farther from just the team. To me, this is an agile organization. So we're focused on building the right things. But we, we also want to build things right. So nobody wants things that, that, that doesn't work, of course. But nobody wants useless things, too. The problem here, though, is we don't know what is useful and what is not useful. Maybe the customer does. But so, most of the time, not even the customer knows what they need. So it's the purpose of a business to delight the customer, even if the, even the customer doesn't know what we want. We all are customers, right? Do you know what you want? Maybe. 
maybe you know this this uh, episode from uh, from The Simpsons, in which Homer Simpson gets to build his own car, as he wants, right? So they found this uh, lost brother of Homer Simpson. He owns a car manufacturing company, and he grants to Homer Simpson the possibility to build his own car, right? He actually builds, he gets with a bunch of engineers, and they build a monster. They, they build something that is useless, it's something really ugly, because he doesn't know what he wants. And I can see myself as Homer Simpson, like trying to figure out what is my, my dream car. But it, it won't work. I need someone to help me understand what are my needs, and what is the experience that I need the company to get for me. So that's the only way that we have to understand a customer needs is through feedback. So a business that is going to Agile does it because they need feedback from the final customer. Otherwise, everything else doesn't make any sense. So the purpose of a business is to survive and get better every time. So it's very important to focus also on sustaining the system, sustaining this continuous feedback loop and making it every time faster, every time better. So we all know that, right? Great, awesome. So we are in a perfect starting point. We all know then that this is not about IT. Sorry, we are not that important, right? It's about a business, right? Hopefully, more and more business people are getting into the IT movement. That's awesome, that's great. Because we need to change everything or otherwise we could be risking of building things that nobody wants faster and be more just more productive right how about customer centricity what is customer centricity customer centricity is a business approach in which we put the customer on the center of our culture of the culture of the business so we understand the experience that he's going through. We understand how is the experience of being my customer. From before being my customer, during he is my customer, and after he is my customer. So when he's not my customer anymore, right? So that's customer centricity. And in order to achieve that, you need to have in mind your customer. Every time that you produce a piece of software, that you have a discussion, and you do a daily meeting, or you do a planning session, right? That's the customer-centric culture. If it's not in your culture, it's not in your business. So that's customer-centric. And in this session here, we're gonna work on that. We're gonna work on how to keep in mind your customer from the portfolio management to the line of code. Because I've seen that. I've seen that as the organization grows, it's very easy to lose your focus on the final customer experience. It's also because it's much fun to understand the solution and how are we gonna do that, and how is the technology like, that's much more exciting, than to understand the actual problem, right? There was a famous guy called Steve Jobs that gave that message many years ago. So we create a technology, and then we find a way to sell that to someone. And it doesn't work like that way. So you have to find a need, you have to help, understanding what is the experience that you wanna give him, and then find the technology that create that experience. We all know that message, right? So this session is about how to make that message a reality in a company, right? In the flesh, in the trenches. Also, because you don't know your customer. And often, and we all know the, this, this phenomenon of outsourcing, often we understand that the customer is not the people that we have to delight, but the people that pays me, right? So if that company hires me for a product, I should delight that company, but that's not true. That company is trying to create an experience for the final customer. So I have to help that company to create that experience for the, final for the final customer. But we lose that focus. 
right? If that guy has a budget, I'm trying to delight, delight that guy that has a budget. And we, created, we even created that concept that I personally hate, that is the internal customer. There is no internal customer, because if there is an internal customer, IT is a commodity, so I have to delight the business. Maybe the business is right, and they understand the final, cost, the final customer, or maybe the business is not right. How about being part of a team, working together towards the creation of a great experience for my customer? Maybe that's a good point, but for sure, the customer is not the people who pays me, right? And that's uh, sometimes that's not pleasant for business, own business people, right? Because it it's feels really cool to be in charge. It, it feels really cool to feel that you know what your customer want, right? It feels really cool to have a bunch of people creating a toy for you. It's like you're Homer Simpson, you have those engineers building your car, and that's pleasant, of course. I know the solution, I know what they want, but sorry, uh, we are creating a delightful experience here for the final customer, so let's work together toward that, also because the customer is someone that you can't see. Usually you don't have just one person that is your customer, you have a bunch of customers, it's like, like a god, right? You just can't believe in him, you can't see him, you don't know the customer, you have to get to understand him or figure out what he, he wants. It's really difficult. It, it's also like a God because he can either make you the most successful company or to destroy you. That's kind of scary, right? It's much more pleasant just having this guy. He's the boss, he has the money, so he rules. Just let's do what he wants. But that's not gonna make a business successful, right? We are much more powerful if we work together than this internal thing called customer, internal customer, sorry, this, this thing called internal customer. I don't think it wouldn't work at all. And some of you might be thinking this. So I very often use this slide because every time that you hear something new, you feel like this, right? Like, we're already on that, we're on the same page, right? We all understand that. Or, no, that's impossible. So I work as a consultant, or we, we are an outsourcing company, so it's impossible to do that here. But with this session, I just want you to reflect. So this is a reflection session, right? To reflect on how can I help, even if I work for, for, a, for a third party, how can I help that? third party delighting the customer? How can I include that culture? How can I include that message in my company? Of course, because we, we don't know who is our customer and that creates a bunch of new questions around the product development, right? Uh, also, because we are now facing a new kind of customer that is very, very difficult to delight. The society changes very, very fast right now. So three days ago, we all used SMS messages. And now, for example, the people are more prone to use WhatsApp or Telegram or other apps, right? Four years ago, five years ago, netbooks were very popular. And now nobody uses a netbook. And now we're thinking about smartwatches and internet of things like technology and society is evolving every time faster. And this is a great thing for us, though, because even though he is our customer, and we have all, all those new things, so how is he likes, and, and should we create this wow moment or just be wow on the basics? This is great for us because now we can be part of a business, right? We agile people, we know how to each and adapt, right? We know this experimental uh, way of understanding the product development. We know this cycle of understanding the needs, responding to needs, and listening to your feedback, right? We know also Lean Startup approach, and uh, basically Scrum on, or every agile methodology is, is that, is experiments. 
So we can help the rest of the organizations, the rest of the organization in being involved in our initiatives, in our agile initiatives. So finally, with this customer centric customer centricity approach and this experimental approach put it together, we can be meaningful for the business. So very often I got customers or I know other organizations that were complaining about business not willing to be part of the agile transformation because it's not meaningful for them. So I don't care. Usually the business thinks that we are a commodity. So this is the user story for a business in every product. So just as an internal customer, so you are a commodity, I want you to build that product that my boss told me to build so I can look good. In the next meeting. <laughs> and please, cut this. Don't bother me with your shit. Don't bother me with your shit. I don't care how you build it. I don't care your agile initiative, scrum, whatever. Do whatever you want, but just get the thing done. If you can be more productive, even better. But this time we can be meaningful for the business. We can help them experiment, right? We could be part of the experiment. So we can change that into something like this. So as a company, when we all together, our goal is to deliver delightful experience. So being a customer is freaking great, right? Sounds much nicer, right? So that's a great thing. Agile, Agile is, is already experienced on doing that, on experimenting. And we can help the business doing that. So let's do a little bit of practice, right? We have one hour, right? So we are now going to do some real stuff. <coughs> Sounds good? Yay! All right, let's OK, let's do it. So then, are you comfortable right now? Yes. Yeah. So I need you to stand up. <laughs> so please, I need you to order yourself in just one line, right? Being here, if you are, oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I will explain you, I will explain you how. Not, not that fast, not that fast, not that fast, wait. So I'll position myself, it's a big room, so here, if I'm an expert in Agile, right? I'm an expert in Agile. Here, if, well, not that kind of an expert, no, a little bit, no, quite a bit, not that much. Here is like break even, right? Not, eh, eh, second time, second conference, first, first conference, read a book once. Agile what? Right? Agile what? Okay, so just one straight line, okay? Go ahead, go. One line, move it, move Just one line. I think yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, four, five. 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 Okay? So, please. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? Join your table. There is something that is not working here. Okay, so yeah, you switch table. You are four? Five. Five? Where is four? No, 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 no. Four, four, I said four here. Oh. Oh, you were here, sorry. You can, okay, observers can be just below, 
right? That's there. Observers can be there. You want to be an observer, observe. You want to work, you have a team. OK. So we're going to work in this uh, new project that is called Uber Tac Tac, right? Uber Tac Tac. Uber Tac Tac. Uber Tac Tac. So yeah, more or less, you all know Uber, right? OK, so we are doing something similar. So the first thing that we're going to do, yay, you were tac tac. Let's play. We're going to work on a persona, right? OK, you all know the technique called persona or not? Who doesn't know the technique called persona? OK, great. So what we're going to do now is to define a potential customer, right? for my new application, right? And in this case, we're going to include something on the traditional persona. That is the moment of truth. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw, please try to draw nicely a face or something, and describe this person. So age, name, not like an actual age, not between 25 and 30, no, an actual age an actual name, an actual gender, is a person, right? Potential user for the Uber Tac Tac, right? And something about him, right? States, uh, uh, sorry, tastes, uh, hobbies, what he does for a living, what he want to do, he does sports or not, or he or she, whatever. And we're going to include, and this is the first customer uh, centricity seed, what are the moments of through of that person? So when that person touches my business, when it becomes important for him, when he starts using it, for example, stops using it, or something that is happening while he uses it. Remember, delight the customer before, during, and after. Right? And we have to describe what is the touch point. So how is, what, what is he touching? What is his contact? to my business, right? What part of the application, what uh, call center, what whatever, or the Apple store, or the Play whatever, right? Is the contact, is the touch, what is he touching, right? Okay, so we have maximum of 10 minutes to describe a potential user of Huber Tac Tac, and please recreate it, okay? So let's go, 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, please, yeah, sure. You have the big piece of paper to draw nicely. I'm going to give you markers. I'm going to give you markers. Yeah, I have markers. Yeah, just, please, you can help me with this table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, one person. Just one, one persona per table. You have here markers. So try to be creative and draw nicely. All right, so one marker for us. <laughs> and here good. you have markers. Oh, oh excuse me. Wow, very nice. Wow. I'm sorry to start drawing. Water. I was looking for. I was looking for water. Oh, water is outside, not the bottle. 
Uh, they don't have bottles anymore? Oh, okay. So, I'm gonna get this. Because it's gonna be tap water and I'm not gonna risk that. <laughs> So here you have this to okay, when so you finish you when right. you're done. Yeah, sure thing. Thank uh, you very so much. To, uh, he is you are the tape owner. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> when you're done, you have to stick there. You are the tape owner now. When when you are done. When you're done, so you have to stick it there. Yeah. So you are now the tape owner. Yeah. When you're finished, yeah. When you're done, please stick it on the wall. You are the tape owner now. <laughs> when you're done, when you're finished, when you're finished. You have to stick it on the wall. Okay. You are now the tape owner. Okay, tape owner of this table. You are now the paper owner. <laughs> this is for the next exercise. You are now the paper owner. <laughs> this is for the next exercise. You are now paper owner. For the next exercise. You are now the paper owner. <laughs> For the next exercise, you are now the paper owner. The owner of paper owner. Four minutes to go. Four minutes. Don't forget your touch points and moments of truth. Right? Four minutes. Don't forget. Touch point, moments, moments of truth. Touch point can be part of your application, for example. But think about how he touches. The business, the Huber Tac Tac business. <laughs> Use your tape to put your piece of paper on the wall, right? So please, table one, table three, table two, there, sorry, <laughs> table four, table five. Yeah, there, sorry. You.
for sure. Yeah, yes, please. Why do we do what? OK, because it's fun, right. But what else? Why? Exactly, empathy. Empathy. So we want to understand how he feels, right? We want to put ourselves in his shoes. So now we're going to go one step forward. And we're going to create a story, right? This is a customer journey. But this is customer journey my style. So what I do, what I need you to do is to pick one of two of those moments of truth and create a story, an actual story that can happen in the life of that person, right? In which he is to touch my business, right? For that, I need you to do some, some sketching, some storytelling. Do whatever you want. Be creative. You have a piece of paper. You have your markers. Just draw a story, right? And what is, he, what is happening that day for him in which he touches my business? And when he needs the tac tac, to use the tac tac Huber, the Huber tac tac, right? It's clear? So 10 minutes, get to work, customer journey, more empathy. Get Piece. Dave Warner. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Okay. And then the chat over here. Yeah. So that we awesome. Oh, Thanks. Like, uh, like this. <laughs> you know, I also think it's, I think it's connecting with their needs at a deeper level. Because when you do something like this, you might actually unearth different areas where we could be helpful but we never thought of it. Yeah, exactly. Right? We could have being there to help our users, and we are exploring those opportunities as well. So if we were just going about working on the features and stories, we would have never thought of where else can we touch them, yeah. right? And how can we make their life easier? But by going through these stories, we do realize or uncover opportunities when we can make their life easier. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And if you do this exercise, this is part of a design thinking process, usually. Yes. So if you do this for real, you're going to uh, try to get more empathy through shadowing, sh through interviewing customer, through asking, through work focus group, through getting that people, that actual people that is within your, your customer uh, profile and getting this information from them, right? That's a great exercise. You put together developers with actual customers, understanding their needs. And something that, that is very powerful to ask, to ask your customer is what bothers you in that situation and how can we help you, right? Bothers me that I can get home, so how can I help you? So I don't care about the downloading the application or logging in or whatever, I just gotta get home fast. Yeah. And maybe if there's another tac tac coming up, I, I won't wait for you, so I'm gonna take it. Or uh, I don't have any cash on me. Yeah. But I still gotta get home. Exactly. I'm gonna lose. Exactly. Or I lost my wallet, but I still gotta get home. Exactly. Lose. So that, that that's your situation. And no matter how good or bad your application is, if it makes your life easier, it's gonna be successful, right? And developers have to understand that. Uh, what I use in order to get that flowing down to the developers, because here usually we are on the business level, right? We are not yet on the user story. Right? on the, the actual stuff that is going to be done by teams. So what I do at that epic level is something that I call customer epics or customer focus epics. And we're going to work on something like that. Like that, like that sorry. So we have these pieces of papers. Just grab one per table. We're going to write just one of this. Right? This is not a template at all. So forget the template, right? Sorry, but I have to write something there. And also, it's not related to your tuck tuck on purpose. So you have to think and explore yourself, and explore the empathy that you get on the table for your customer to create something like this. So you choose the moment of truth, right? 
choose, choose one of, the, of, of those that you already created and write it, write it down, right? And write, again, the touch point here, right? Okay? It's a big user story. And then you write the name of your user persona and write what he wants what, or she wants, what he really wants to get out of me, out of my business, right? Then what happens when, he, when sh he or she touches the touch point? What happens? I want that, I touch here, and I get this, right? So the focus here is how are we helping him or helping her, right? You understand what I mean? So touch point, situation for that person related to the touch point. What does she want? What, what happens when he touches the touch point? And how are we going to answer that need? Right? It's a customer focus epic when we describe what is happening in my customer and how are we answering to his need. OK? So just try to write in your table this one or two related to those touch points and that people that you just creating your personas, right? right? So maximum 10 minutes, just do a couple of this. Very well done, new team, okay? All right. Let's go. I keep it that there so you can just have an example. Right. It's not easy at all, huh? Yeah, it's, not it's really hard. It's, that's a really hard one. Great. So if you didn't yet, please stick it in the wall. Stick your. Great. So who, who of you or which team has been already talking about technology? About an app or you were talking about an app? Were you 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 talking about the app? Were you talking about the app? Okay, so you're human beings. Right, so it's okay, it's normal. You are not really supposed to talk a lot about the app yet. <laughs> you because maybe you don't have an app yet. I don't know. I don't know about your situations, your customers, you know better than me, right? But wh why? Why do we do this? Why do we do this? Ah, yeah. How we manage with the expectation. So what we can do to help... Exactly, exactly. So we are now trying to understand what we can do to cover our customers' expectations. So we are hopefully getting something done after this. Great. We don't know what. We don't know how yet. So then, it ho hopefully here we already have some people from development, from people from IT, to help just having an initial information about the customer. So just to get empathy for the customer, just to receive information, not to give information, right? In this part of the, of the cycle. What are we doing now? We, do, do you know this? <coughs> When I show this video, sometimes I feel right? a real of that day. So, you know what's that? No, it's not Super Mario. No, no. Again. That's, that's a product or
with what he does, right? This is a problem for me. So he he takes he takes a big a big piece of work, right? And he split it in two, right? With his magical gun, right? Right? So when he split it, well, why is this not working properly? Okay. Splitting it too. So there we have two pieces of work that are the smaller, right? You can handle that. So what do you think a producer should do? Break everything at once? No, he would die, right? Because if the ball hits him, he dies, right? So he chooses. What, what is the best choice? Is this or this? So he goes on. So what does he do? He explodes. Uh, he he exploded this in two, and then he didn't go for this one here because he wants to get rid of the small one, right? So what he did here? Hold back. Come on. He split this. He, he didn't split this one. This was was split before. He split the one here, and now we have two new smaller pieces of work, right? That can be consumed by the team. So this is more enough. So then. Right. So you, what you do is you. I, I don't like the word priority. Right. I don't, I don't want to use that. It's a tricky word. The, uh, this is not part of the workshop, but I will explain why. So, if you say priority, you mean that something is more important than another thing, right? And uh, behind every initiative, there is someone who invented, who had the idea. So, if I say that you are a priority over her. You are more important. You are not important. It's not pleasant, right? If I ask you to order your work, there is no uh, aggressiveness. It's not that aggressive. That is why I prefer to use order. Just order things. You prioritize. This is more important than that. And even worse, if you say priority, that means treating the biggest fear of a human being. So decide. You have to decide between this and this. No, I want both, right? It's not because you, when you choose, you have to choose things that you want. It's because you want, you have to choose what you don't want, and we want everything, right? So that's why you have everything is prioritized. Everything is important. This is important. This is important. This is important. Like, of course, everything is important. Don't call priority order. I just talk about order. So now. I chose <laughs> team behave as a product owner, right? So you have post it notes and you have to split your big user story in two, three, whatever, smaller user stories. Then you don't have to write that much, you just have to write a title, right? Because this is not, we all know that this is not a contract and we are not drawing, uh, writing a contract before, just gaining empathy. So now we're just writing titles. So Splitting the work this way. So first, I need you to do this. A split one on two, and then choose what is most important from the customer perspective, and then I split that one again in two or three. I encourage you to draw a line so you don't mix up later, right? Until you get to small enough pieces of work. You here don't have a team, so you just have to get, right? You see if this is user story size or not. Need a backlog in 10 minutes. <laughs> you can do it. Okay.
Okay. Great. Of course, this this is just an example, right? Just a tiny bit. Or what does it or, or what does it mean to get and start up a, a user story workshop? with something that came up directly from a need of a customer, right? So if you do this on true life, just ensure that you start your uh, user story workshop where you create uh, the, actual, the actual backlog in your photo corner that is something coming from the actual customer, right? Something like that, based on the empathy for the customer as this big epic that, is, that you created before, right? Of course, creating a backlog is not something that you can do in 10 minutes right okay then so now you have 30 seconds to decide in each table who resembles more to the persona you created because one of you is going to be that persona 30 seconds choose that persona everyone but the new persona is going to shift tables Right? So you are gonna go here, you're gonna go there, you're gonna go there, you're gonna go there, and you're gonna go there. So the persona, the persona has to pick the persona, the 30 seconds are over. The persona has to take the new group and explain what is on that for him, right? So it's like these guys describe this in my situation, right? And they come up with this journey and with these stories and then with this backlog, right? Okay, so let's go. Maximum on two minutes. Two minutes. Two wall, okay. Yeah, with your team, you're the persona, right? So you guys have to, four girls, two go. This, I thought this was really clear. There, there, there. No, you have to go to that table. Team five with her. Team five with her. Yeah. Use the wall. Everything is in the wall. You have to go to the wall. Use the, use the wall. That's why I ask you, everyone to stand up. One minute. I'm gonna no 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 no. You you can see whatever you want. I'm gonna we're we're closing. Yeah yeah we're closing. That's all. So it's sorry sorry, but we are running out of time. Uh, why? <laughs> why why? Why do you think this is important? So this time, I call this reverse demo, right? Reverse demo. It's when the customer tells the team what he does with the actual stuff built. What do you think is this useful for? Yeah, yeah. It, cr it creates a much healthier. It's validating the experience. Rather, exactly, exactly. So that helps you validating the experience created, right? And of course, this is very motivating for the teams. Yeah, I do, I do this in one of my customers, and uh, it's it's great for them. So it's like they have the people using the software explaining what they're gonna do with the stuff that they build in the current sprint, right? This is awesome. So there's a bunch of things that I try in my customers and doing in my customer in order to get this customer-centric culture happen. So here you just seen some of those, right? So we're gonna quickly go through some of things that you can do, such as including actual customers in your inceptions, so the actual customer, do the stuff that we did with personas, so including the moments of truth, connect the, your, your backlog or your user story map or whatever with a customer journey so that you understand when and how is the customer gonna use that, that stuff of yours. Have a conversation about uh, at epic level about the need of your customer, so what you created there that I call uh, customer-centric epic, 
right, for customer epics. So you all know that this is a template, but templates are evil. So I'm not going to show that anymore. So include actual customers in, in, in your demos or in your screen reviews, or even better, do this reverse screen demos, right? Something interesting we can do, use social media to get actual actionable feedback from your final customers, as this company does, right? And that can help you creating the actual customer-centric uh, culture in which you know that you don't know what the customer wants. You just can guess, right? Of course, you have to create a structure to support that. So don't focus on department, don't focus on technologies, don't focus on, on, on components. You have to focus on experiences, right? And there are some organizations that are organized that way. And of course, it's very important to align, cost, uh, to align constraints, so to have goals that are aligned toward the, the, the experience created in your customer. So, Again, use what you already know. You already know about Agile, about experimentation, about e e e inspecting and adapting. Just make it meaningful for the business. So you can go through Linux startup, design thinking, Agile again. And of course, you, you can do it. You can do it. You just have to pray for it to happen in your organization, OK? So make it happen, please. Thank you very much. Yeah, sorry, we are a bit delayed. Yeah, yeah, of course, I'm going to be outside. Open for questions. Thank you very much for coming.